The Minnesota Department of Agriculture confirms the emerald ash borer has now been found in Winona County. The financial cost of controlling these invasive species is enormous. The park district has cut it and sprayed it, but like a thorn in its side, the buckthorn has returned. Invading species from other parts of the world are already affecting our native animals and plants. As natural resource professionals, we know what damage invasive species can do to our ecology and what the cost is to control them. So we want to stop their spread. Non-native species are currently one of our biggest threats to natural resources and the second most important threat to biodiversity. Uh, it's not like the old days when we didn't have as many invasive species to worry about. These days there are so many that have moved into the state that if we're not actively preventing their spread, then we're probably moving them. In order to avoid spreading terrestrial invasive species, we need to understand how they are transported. After coming in contact with invasive species, people and their tools, equipment, vehicles, and clothing can carry with them the start of a new infestation. Sometimes people have intentionally brought exotic species here to use as ornamental plants. Later, we discovered those species had few natural competitors to keep their populations in check when they were carried into the environment by people, birds, and natural processes. This transportation of invasive species allows them to move more rapidly over longer distances than would be possible in nature. Plant parts, leaves, and seeds may contain the reproductive parts of plants. Plant materials can also harbor plant pests, such as insects and disease-causing fungi. Mud caked on equipment, vehicles, and tools can also contain plant parts, seeds, worms, insects, and other creatures that are invasive species. Even water that is carried along with equipment and gear that has been in wetlands can be carrying invasive creatures, pathogens, and plant materials. Of course, there are also aquatic invasive species, such as zebra mussels, spiny water flea, and Eurasian water milfoil that can create new infestations and problems if transported. You should review training material on preventing the spread of these waterborne non-native species in addition to this presentation on terrestrial invasive species. Besides being a good idea, preventing the spread of invasive species is a requirement of our jobs. Department policy and state and federal regulations require DNR staff to protect the resources we manage. Working diligently to prevent the spread of invasive species is one of the steps in carrying out this duty. DNR managers and supervisors are responsible for meeting the needs of the state and for directing the work of employees. Therefore, managers and supervisors are required to plan work tasks and workflow to prevent the spread of terrestrial and aquatic invasive species. Staff and contractors who work in the field and at multiple sites will be expected to take the steps to remove terrestrial invasive species. Staff members who don't normally work in the field, but who take vehicles into natural areas for site visits, tours, and surveys must also make certain they are not transporting invasive species. When we move between work sites, it's important to do the necessary cleaning of equipment, gear, and clothing before you leave the work site. It's also important to plan time at the end of your work day to clean all of your gear and equipment and make sure you remove any invasive species. Because cleaning equipment can be time-consuming, you'll want to plan your work to minimize the time you'll spend doing it. Start by being familiar with the sites in your area which are identified as infested with terrestrial invasive species. 
do site inventories if this information isn't known. Try to plan your day's work to be in the same locality so that you'll only need to clean once at the end of the day. If you must work at multiple sites in a day, start with the sites that have few or no invasive species and work toward the ones that are most invaded. This will lessen the possibility of bringing new invaders to a cleaner site. If you are not certain of the best route to minimize the spread of invasive species, check with your supervisor or the site manager to plan the best route. Be sure that staff and vendors know the route for the work they are to do and understand its purpose of minimizing the spread of invasive species. Timing your work to avoid times when invasive species are at peak growth or producing seeds will help minimize the cleaning needed. For example, avoid mowing wild parsnip when it is in seed so it isn't spread along the mowing route. Workers and contractors should be made aware of this timing as well. If you find yourself without the necessary cleaning equipment, or if thorough cleaning is not feasible, then do the best cleaning you can before leaving an infested site. Then take other steps to minimize the risk of spreading invasive species, such as keeping the vehicle or equipment on paved or gravel surfaces until proper cleaning can be done at a low-risk site, such as a parking lot or a commercial washing facility. For small tools and clothing that may carry seeds and invasive creatures, you can wrap them in tarps or garbage bags or place them in containers until they can be cleaned. However, it's best to set up a cleaning zone where all equipment and gear can be cleaned before leaving an infested site. Assembling the cleaning equipment before starting work at a site helps staff be ready to deal with any invasive species issues. Be sure to schedule enough time to clean your tools, equipment, and vehicles before the end of the workday. If you are moving between infested sites, allow time for cleanup before leaving the site. When cleaning, be sure to control the runoff of any wash water. This water may carry seeds or parts of invasive species, and you don't want it affecting other locations. A natural or portable catch basin can hold the water as it seeps into the ground or evaporates. Be sure to monitor these cleaning sites and eradicate any invasive plants that may grow there. A walk-around inspection and a look underneath should be done to ensure that the cleaning has been done thoroughly. If you are working with contractors, they are responsible for arriving at the site with clean equipment, and they must clean their equipment before leaving an infested site, especially if they are going next to another natural site. In the case of logging trucks, they don't have to be cleaned before leaving a landing site, as long as they are only traveling between landing sites within the same timber sale and the sawmill.